It's a great honor to be here. I want to thank Bob Roth, um, the David Lynch Foundation, for their extraordinary work, to say the least. Most importantly, it's a miracle because I can meditate. I'm a type A A A A A personality. <laughs> I make Soledad look like she's hypothyroid. <laughs> I'm the best thing that ever happened to TM because if I can do it, anybody can do it. And that became the joke back in Washington, D.C., when I, my wonderful colleague, uh, Dr. Norman Rosenthal, a fellow uh, uh, scientist at the National Institutes of Health, and I um, had gotten together about three years ago, uh, and he told me he was writing a new book. And um, I said, gee, another one on seasonal affective disorder? And rock on, man, that sounds really cool. And he says, no, uh, this is different. It's called transcendence. I said, you've lost your mind. Um, what are you doing? And he said, well, I, I've, you know, this, this whole thing about transcendental meditation, Pam, you have to do this. And I said, really? I have to schedule breathing right now because I was scheduling, <laughs> I was living on Virgin Airways between Washington and L.A. filming for the Discovery Channel. I said, you know, four days in a row, are you out? Of, I can't even see my husband four days in a row. And you want me to do what? Stay still? Well, I'm also an athlete, so my idea of a good time is, well, in three weeks I'm running the Boston Marathon to give you a small idea of how that one's going to go. The, let, let the prayer circle start now. Just looked at those hills again. Um, and so I thought that was where it was until about uh, a year and some change ago when um, Norm circled back with the galley of his book. And uh, as, as authors, we, we usually exchange quotes among each other. And he said, read the galley and give me a really juicy quote. And I said, okay, all right. And then I cursed him because I couldn't put the galley down. It was that good. Why? I'm a scientist. I'm a physician and a scientist. I've dedicated my life to good science. And this was just wall to wall, the most profound science, finally showing that there is a very strong connection between what happens in transcendental meditation specifically and a number of, of disorders that we all know, everything from depression to PTSD um, to ADD, and it just goes on and on. And uh, so I decided to do it. And uh, I have to tell you, first of all, I'm the first research scientist um, at the senior fellow level in the Office of Alternative Medicine at the NIH. That was my Jekyll and Hyde thing. I was, by day, she was wearing her white coat and scrubs and working on, on uh, regular patients. By night, she was with the Office of Alternative Medicine, you know. And I met, that's where I met Herb Benson of the famous relaxation response at the Harvard University um, Mind Body Institute. And I am their most spectacular, most famous failure. I lasted 11 seconds. I couldn't relax to save my life. You could have given me the half a million, you know, for the, uh, or the half a billion for the lottery. I still couldn't make it happen. Didn't, I, I don't know, whatever. When the teacher, uh, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. So when uh, I finished the work with uh, Norm's book, it was, uh, it was very interesting. So I marched in to the people, uh, Mario and Linda, down at the Bethesda TM Center, and uh, I warned them ahead of time. I said, I'm coming. Now, as I sat down, I said, we have rules, okay? If I see any candles, I'm out of here, okay? I'm not changing religions. I kind of like mine. It's a little flawed, but, you know, it works, right? Okay? We're not sharing. No circles are forming. Stay away from me. And I just finished a triathlon, so I have hair on my chest. So don't mess with me. And Mario stood up, and he said, Ah, oh, Dr. Peak, we knew you were coming. We were ready for you. We have a customized form of meditation for you. We call it warrior meditation. I said, yeah, I like that. Let's sit down. Let's rock. And then I said, 20 minutes? And then a small miracle took place. It fit like a glove. And I haven't stopped, and it's been a year and a half. And it's been fantastic. So I'm a physician and a scientist with a mouth in multimedia. And so you're going to be hearing a lot about TM at multiple levels as I begin my work, um, both in messaging as well as in research, because I'm going to begin a number of studies at the University of Maryland utilizing this. And, and here's what's interesting. 
I used to think, oh my God, I'm coming out of the closet. They're going to know I meditate. Um, and so I went to my very esteemed colleagues at the NIH, one in particular uh, who heads the National Institute of Drug Abuse because I'm going to be doing some work with food addiction specifically. Um, and this is obviously the addiction place. And I sat down with Dr. Nora Volkow, um, who is uh, an extraordinary uh, scientist, one of the only two women who head the 17 institutes of the NIH, very powerful woman. And I sat down and, and I said, I have a very extraordinary and amazing potential uh, solution um, that could be added uh, to our armamentarium of what we want to do in addition. In, in addiction, she's really what? She's sitting on the edge of her chair, almost falling off. And um, she says, what is it? What is it? And I said, it's, <clears throat> it's meditation. Um, <laughs> she says, really, what was that again? <laughs> Meditation. And I said, it's, it's, it's meditation. She says, that's fantastic. She says, will you write a protocol? I would love to fund that. Now I fell off the chair. Um, I said, really? You want to fund it? Um, she says, of course. Nothing else works. <laughs> Who knew? Hey, look, you put it out there. What's the worst that can happen? They reject you. So get over it already. So I grew a set and I, I asked her. And it worked. So now we're going to have a study. How do you like that? It works. All right, as they say, enough about me. Um, how about a little science? Tara said it so beautifully, um, incredibly moving. Uh, Charles Darwin once said that those who survive are not the strongest or the smartest. They're those who can adapt. The two words that you need to understand are adapt and adjust. And the human being in any warm-blooded mammal adapts and adjusts in very interesting ways, sometimes in self-destructive ways. Some, sometimes people think that adapting is putting something up your nose or up your veins or drinking too much or eating too much, whatever. That's, mal that's maladaptation and maladjustment instead. So let's look at women for a moment. Clearly, I share everyone's uh, fervor and passion with what this, this whole theme today is resonating around, which is this women and stress. Is it just stress? No, it's something I call toxic stress. And when I wrote my very first book about this subject, oh, I think about 10 years ago or so, I actually coined that term. Toxic stress is any stress in your life associated with the three musketeers, helplessness, hopelessness, and defeat. When that happens, extraordinary hormonal changes happen in both a male and a female. Your sex hormones decrease. Cortisol, or stress hormone, increases precipitously, as well as adrenaline. When that does, you erode your immune system, and you're wide open for impulsivity and for implosion. Men explode, women implode. We have a different way of dealing with stress, as it were. Men like to go it alone. Men tend to become much more solitary, take it to themselves. Women tend and befriend. That's the oxytocin that flows in our, in our blood. Men and women both have it. Women tend to have more of it because of estrogen. Estrogen tends to make it even more powerful and more potent. Men dissociate and withdraw. Women associate and seek support. And as Tara said so beautifully, honey, we need the estrogen squad. <laughs> we need to be able to relate. We need to be able to say, same thing with you? No kidding. You know, as a chief lifestyle expert for WebMD, I have 90 million members. They like to relate. Look at how those exchange boards light up, especially when we go deeply into everything from men's health to women's health and back and forth. They just light up like Kyoto at nighttime. Women often course through a path of self-destruction on their way to healing. They gain weight. Tara gained weight. They abuse themselves. They overeat. Substance abuse is a big piece of the action. And that's because we're in pain, and we need to numb it. And you'll find anything you can that works with you to numb it, and you do. But numbing's not the answer. As the toxic stress heightens, something is going on in the brain. The prefrontal cortex 
is in charge of executive function. It helps you plan, strategize, organize. It helps you rein in the three eyes, impatience, irritability, impulsivity. It allows you to be able to be creative. When all of those things are happening, you're in good shape. What happens under toxic stress? It's shut down. So is your memory. So is your ability. You feel paralyzed. Tara said it so beautifully, so elegantly. You're paralyzed. You're non-functional. Your prefrontal cortex is getting hammered right and left. So it's really imperative to reclaim it. You need to be able to get it back. You need to strengthen it. That's one of the reasons why I like TM myself, because I was promised a big brain. <laughs> now, raise your hand if you wouldn't want a bigger brain. Come on. Now, the rest of you are in deep denial. <laughs> you want a big brain, right? So when you do something like transcendental meditation, we now have science. We have hardcore science with great tools, functional MRIs, PET scans, that allow us to be able to actually measure and see, visualize, observe, take pictures of what happens in the brain as you're going through transcendence. You turn on your prefrontal cortex and the stress response itself, as you're looking through the limbic system, the amygdala, as you're looking at that entire hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, it's becoming quieter. As that becomes quiet, the prefrontal cortex is allowed to be able to optimally function. Who wouldn't like that? At the same time, when you're also leading a healthy lifestyle, doing this, exercising, for instance, etc., guess what you're doing? You're inducing the growth of more brain cells. It's called neurogenesis or neuroplasticity in the brain. When that happens, you get a bigger brain. We've measured it. Big brain. We like it. <laughs> so what's your reward out of this whole thing? Well, I think, again, Tara said it beautifully, and that is the whole issue of transcendence is centering to a core of peace, allowing yourself to be able to just take a moment and to be able to reorganize. Come on, you're on a hike, right? Don't you take a moment to rest? This never rests. And when you have PTSD and MST and all of these other forms of violence and trauma and toxic stress, there's no rest. You have to find the rest. And this is, by science, by far, the most optimal way to do this. I've already piloted this with a number of my patients. In early studies, we're going to be doing work with food addiction uh, as one form of addiction uh, and transcendental meditation. And the results have been nothing less than extraordinary. So as we're looking at all of these different forms of stress across the board, there's something else I'm going to add, and it's a new form of science. And this wasn't actually in my abstract, so listen up and Google it hard, and this will be empowering to you, because I looked at that word behind me. It was empowerment. Listen, DNA is not your destiny. It's not. I could take your genes, and I can change expression. I won't change the gene, but I will change its expression by every thought you take, every thought you have, the food you eat, and the physical activity that you do. This is extraordinary. It's called epigenetics. And the science of epigenetics has just emerged over the last five to six years or so, and something that we're studying and incorporating in our work in a big way. When you do something like Transcendental Meditation, what we're now going to be studying is actual gene expression. So whereas that gene may be leaving you wide open and vulnerable for depression, for anything that happened to you, either in utero or in your own environment, you have the power to change the genetic expression to your betterment. And it starts with your head, and a healthy lifestyle. It's kind of what I call my three M's, mind, mouth, and muscle. Easy way to remember it. So just remember, you know, what Tara said was so important. What those children of those mothers who've experienced the trauma are now undergoing is our changes. These are genetic expression changes. 
and you want those to be as positive, as empowering as possible. And that will only happen if you take the right actions, mind, mouth, and muscle. So as we seek the solutions to this toxic stress, especially as it applies to women, this panel is issuing a collective call to arms and minds. Thank you.